In the beautiful jungles of Panama's Boquete region, two young women set off on a life-changing adventure. Chris Creamers, born in 1992, and Lee San Froon, born in 1991, were friends and graduates eager to explore the world. Their plan was a six-week mission trip to Panama, where they wanted to learn Spanish and get to know the local culture. However, things didn't go as they planned. The two women disappeared on April 1, 2014, while hiking near Baru Volcano, never to be found again. This case is full of inconsistencies, from a camera found completely intact containing hundreds of strange pictures to women's clothing scattered all over the area. In fact, over 24 other tourists vanished or were found dead in the same area between 2009 and 2017. To this day, no one knows what happened to the girls on that fateful night. Welcome back to True Crime Expresso. Here we cover solved and unsolved crimes and harrowing mysteries from around the globe. If you're new here, consider subscribing and liking our video and enabling the notification bell so you never miss a chilling crime video. Now, let's start from the very beginning. Chris Kremers, born on August 9, 1992, in Amersfoort, Utrecht, the Netherlands, and Lisanne Froon, born on September 24, 1991, also from Amersfoort, were close friends. Chris was known for her openness, creativity, and responsible nature while Lisanne was an aspiring, optimistic, and intelligent young woman with a passion for volleyball. Chris had recently completed her studies in cultural social education, with a specialization in art education from the University of Utrecht, while Lisanne had earned a degree in applied psychology in Deventer. In the weeks leading up to their trip to Panama, Lisanne had moved into Chris's dorm room in Amersfoort, and they both worked at the cafe restaurant Inden Klein and Hap. Together, they saved money for six months, planning a six-week adventure in Panama. They wanted to explore the local culture, learn Spanish, and make a meaningful impact, particularly by volunteering with children. This trip was really special for Lee San, as it was a graduation present. Their Panamanian adventure began on March 15, 2014. Before reaching Boquet, a charming mountain town, they explored other parts of the country for two weeks. After this leg of their journey, they made their way to Boquet, where they were to help local communities, volunteer with children, and improve their Spanish skills. They arrived in town on March 29th and were set to stay with a local family for a month as part of their volunteering commitment. Arriving in Boquet a little ahead of the official start of the volunteer program, Chris and Lizanne decided to go on a hike and explore the clouded forests around the active Baru volcano near the Continental Divide. On Tuesday, April 1st, they began their hike with the host family's dog, setting out into the forest along the Pianista Trail at around 11 a.m. As the night grew darker, the dog returned home, but there was no trace of the girls. As the night passed with neither Chris nor Lizanne returning, the local community decided to call the police on the following day. The concern rippled to the girls' families when they didn't receive their usual daily check-in call. The girls also missed a previously scheduled appointment with a local tour guide on the morning of April 2nd. Subsequently, on April 3rd, the police initiated aerial searches of the forest, while local residents began a ground search operation. In the days following the young women's disappearance, search efforts continued, with authorities conducting both foot and aerial searches. The girls had begun their hike alone, only seeking directions from a local innkeeper who recommended them to take a taxi back to town. By April 6th, the parents of both women were extremely worried. They, along with police, dog units, and detectives from the Netherlands, flew to Panama to conduct an extensive search of the forests, which lasted for 10 days. Although the scale of the search was reduced on April 14th, efforts continued for 10 more weeks. While the families and detectives were deeply involved in the search, some speculated that Lizanne and Chris may not have been lost in the mountains, but rather had become victims of a crime in town. This theory was later proven to be false. Ten weeks after their mysterious disappearance, a woman from the local Ngebe tribe came forward with a discovery, Lisanne's blue backpack. She claimed to have found it by a riverbank near her village. The backpack had several items in it. Inside, they found two pairs of sunglasses, $84 in cash, Lisanne's passport, a water bottle, Lisanne's camera, and the women's phones. The interesting part was that all these items were packed, dry, and in remarkably good condition. Examination of the women's call logs revealed that the phones remained active for 10 days following their disappearance. During this period, Chris and Lee San made desperate calls for help. They dialed 112, the international emergency number, 
as well as Panama's emergency number, 911. Their ordeal began just a few hours into their hike, when they attempted multiple emergency calls. Unfortunately, due to the lack of reception in the remote area, none of these calls successfully connected, except for a fleeting 911 call on April 3rd that lasted just over a second before losing connection. One report revealed that 77 emergency call attempts were made using Chris's iPhone. After these attempts, the phones remained active for some time. Chris's locked phone also showed evidence of someone repeatedly entering the wrong PIN or password. On April 11th, one of the phones was turned on at 10.51 a.m., only to be powered off for the last time a little over an hour later, at 11.56. Given this timeline, the police assumed that at least one of the women was alive at that time. The discovery of Lisanne's camera, found within the recovered backpack, told a new story. Among the images stored on the camera, some photos from April 1st suggest that the women might have ventured into the wilderness hours before they made their first 911 call. The camera had more than a hundred pictures, with the first ones showing typical touristy shots, featuring the women smiling together in selfies. As you scroll through the series of photos, the tone shifts entirely. On April 8th, a series of photos was captured, likely between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. In several photos, it appears they were near a river or a ravine. One of the images revealed a twig with plastic bags and candy wrappers atop a rock. Another photo showcased what seemed to be toilet paper and a mirror placed on another rock. There was also a photo of Chris's hair. While there is no clear head wound visible, some vague markings under the hair raise questions. Her hair looked too clean and dry. This is very strange given the presumed circumstances of being missing in the jungle of Boquet for eight days, especially if they were sleeping without protection from the elements, head cover, or a pillow. There could be several explanations for this apparent cleanliness. One possibility is that the flash of the camera may have influenced the way the hair appeared. Flash photography can sometimes make hair appear shinier and cleaner than it actually is, as it can create highlights and reflections. Another explanation could be that the hair was relatively clean, due to a lack of exposure to elements like rain or mud during their time in the jungle. The missing photo number 509, from the sequence on the camera, is among the most strangest mysteries in this case. Taken between the daytime and nighttime photos, the fact that it was manually deleted makes it irretrievable. This missing photo might hold the key in discovering what happened during the hike. Experts proposed multiple theories to explain the weird photos. One theory was that Lisan used the camera for light, perhaps in the dark or low light conditions, or to document Chris's last known whereabouts before going further to seek help. It was also suggested that the photos might have served as improvised trail markers to help them navigate the terrain or guide rescuers to their location. Another theory was that neither Lisan nor Chris took those photos, and they may have been taken by someone else who potentially abducted the women. Following the discovery of Lisan's blue backpack, the police shifted their search efforts to a different area. This time, they focused on investigating the surrounding regions of the Serpent River, near the village of Alto Romero. And there, they found something that puzzled them even more. Chris's clothing was found neatly arranged on the river's edge, positioned opposite the side where the girls had taken their photos. The shorts were zipped and folded, and they were placed above the waterline, approximately half a mile upstream from the location where the local tribal woman had found the backpack. Two months later, the darkest discovery was made. Human remains were uncovered, starting with a shoe found behind a tree near the river, in the vicinity of where the backpack had been located. The shoe contained a sock and a human foot. DNA testing linked this foot to Lisanne. Subsequent searches in the jungle revealed more human remains, but the condition of the bodies and the distribution of the remains suggested that they had been scattered by the river over time. On August 29th, a ball of skin from Lisan's shin was discovered. Forensic analysis revealed that the skin was in an early stage of decomposition and showed signs of insect activity. It was noted that the skin might have been altered or affected in some way making it difficult to determine its original condition. The condition of Chris's remains in contrast to Lisan's revealed an interesting detail. Chris's bones seemed to have been bleached clean, appearing perfectly white. Forensic testing revealed that the bones hadn't undergone natural weathering, but rather had been unnaturally cleaned possibly with bleach or a similar substance. However, a recent investigation into the case could not find concrete evidence to support the notion that the bones had been bleached. 
the inexplicable cleanliness of the bones remained a mystery. The cause of death or the exact circumstances surrounding what happened to Chris and Lee San could not be determined. Authorities began their investigation by looking for potential suspects and trying to find out whether the women had any companions on the day of their hike besides their dog. The innkeeper the girls had spoken to confirmed that Chris and Lee San were alone when they asked for directions before the hike. However, a development came to light through a Facebook post made by the women. In this post, Chris and Lee San mentioned that they had shared a pleasant brunch with two fellow Dutchmen just before setting out on their hike. This was the last day anyone saw them alive. Despite this, no further reports surfaced regarding the two Dutchmen and authorities didn't investigate them deeply. As a result, detectives were unable to trace the unsolved disappearances back to these mysterious breakfast companions. By March 2015, which was less than a year after the women's disappearance, investigators arrived at a conclusion based on their research. Their findings suggested that Chris and Lisanne most likely met with some form of accident along the trail, shedding light on the mysterious case but still leaving many questions unanswered. The lack of damage to the women's equipment was extremely suspicious. But the police failed to thoroughly investigate this aspect of the case. Enrique Arrocha, the Kremers family's lawyer, expressed concerns about the handling of the investigation. One major issue was the absence of a forensic examination at the alleged crime scene. The evidence and its sources remained unverified and unconfirmed. The fact that some of the women's remains were still missing left the potential for a more definitive cause of death unresolved. Various theories have circulated about the disappearance of the women, some more speculative than others. The suggestion of cannibal natives lacks evidence and has not been substantiated. Similarly, while human trafficking exists in Panama, the discovery of the women's bones seemingly contradicts the possibility that they were taken for such purposes. Panama, overall, is considered relatively safe for tourists, contributing significantly to its thriving tourism industry. Like many places in Central and South America, there are areas that may be considered less safe, including sections where illegal activities might occur. Bocate, being a small town, has areas that some consider less safe with reports of drug-related activities in certain parts. After the discovery of the bodies, some visitors suspected foul play believing the women were murdered. But there seemed to be a silence or lack of information from residents about what actually happened. The mishandling of evidence by the authorities led to major criticism, and it fueled the emergence of various conspiracy theories about the police and government's involvement. The government's prevailing theory suggested that Chris and Lisan were swept away by a river while attempting to cross it using a monkey bridge. But there are various details that shut down this theory. The repeated attempted emergency calls from their phones indicated that they were indeed in danger and in need of help. It's possible that Lisan might have attempted to seek help which could explain the unsuccessful attempts to unlock Chris's phone, perhaps in a desperate search for help. Their situation might have rapidly escalated due to limited resources, leading them into a dangerous condition. The fear they experienced might have gotten worse with the magnitude 6 earthquake that struck the area on April 2nd. But the critical period between April 1st and April 8th remains a significant gap. How they managed to survive for that duration with minimal supplies in a wild jungle environment remains a mystery to this day. Another speculation is hypothermia. Despite Boquette's proximity to the equator and its limited variation in seasons, the area can experience relatively cool nights. This factor, combined with the timing of the young women's disappearance at the start of the wet season, may have contributed to the women's demise. The case took on a darker dimension when it was discovered that between 2009 and 2017, over 24 other tourists had gone missing or turned up dead in the same area. In 2017, the possibility of these disappearances being linked to a serial killer was considered. Leaked law enforcement reports suggested that the young women, as well as potentially others, were deliberately dismembered and their remains scattered. After an 18-month investigation, the report showed that the evidence pointed toward homicide. Despite the potential for reopening the case at any time, the passing years have left many unanswered questions about what happened to Chris Kremers and Lee San Froon in the depths of the Panamanian jungles. As we conclude our exploration of the mysterious case of Chris and Lisan, we're left with more questions than answers. What do you think happened to these two young adventurers during their fateful journey in the jungles of Panama? Do you believe in the serial killer theory, or is there another explanation that resonates with you? True Crime Expresso is all about unraveling mysteries and we're here to bring you more compelling stories. 
What case would you like us to investigate next? Share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more thrilling cases from the world of true crime.